Jonah's thing that we talked about last week? About the rejoicing presence of Christ? Experiencing the presence of the power of Christ? And giving public praise to Christ? So we take one thing. And it's one thing that we all have or can't get. The one thing that it takes to experience a joy filled, peace filled, and blessed life. We all have access to. And we all have. I'll tell you that you got it. Even if you don't know what it is. I've been misleading you. The second thing is you really don't take much of it. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. But what it takes to make mountains move. Okay. Doesn't take a lot. Okay. What it takes to walk on the, the water, the, the challenge of your life, okay. is already available to you. Right. And you already have access to it. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't take a lot of it. Yeah. And that is faith. Yeah. Hebrews 11, 6. Paul writing about the great heroes of faith. Men and women who did marvelous and wonderful things for God. Men and women who experienced the joy and blessing of God. Paul said they had one thing in common. They all had faith. They had different experiences. They had different personal situations. They lived at different times and in different places. And they counted
If you read all the Hebrews 11, you see some men and women who had some wonderful experience in life. In spite of the challenge they faced, in spite of the difficulty they encountered, I, I wish I could have time to tell you that the Rahab fell off as a prostitute. Rahab fell off as a biblical. I'm going to say the word, y'all give it to the Bible. I'll tell you. I'm so glad y'all remember Jesus. Tell me what Jesus said, not say. So, so I use the word prostitute, is that all right? That's all right. Harlot? That's all right. That's what she was. Not here, go home talk about that. But I can't say it in church. I can't say it to edify you, but you can say it to put it down. I'm wrong, he's wrong, you just said that. So I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. So, so, so. so this woman started out as a prostitute. But she ended up as the savior of Israel. Noah fell out of the drunk. But he ended up as the father of Abraham. Abraham fell out of the man who played two women. Your boy from his first man played two women. Abraham took Sarah's handmaid, got her pregnant. Your boy from his first body got my pregnant. But he became the father of many nations. So no matter where you start from, and no matter where you are, your faith can lift you and bring you out of it if you have faith. Everybody say faith. Everybody say faith. Faith. Because without faith, you can't please God. That's right. Without faith, you can't please God. You can see. And you're entrusting. And folk will enjoy hearing you sing. You can worship. And you can enjoy worship. Without faith. You can't please God. Right. And some folk are trying to sing, but not have faith. I know. I know where they got faith. Right the rhythm. Please read it. Said, faith without works. So if I'm not working for God, I'm not serving God. I'm not doing the thing of God that I have no faith. That's right. Because faith, look, listen, if you got faith, then you're going to behave faithfully. That's right. Faith causes me to act faithfully. Faith causes me to do faithful things. Faith causes me to live in a faithful way. Faith causes me to serve faithfully. My faith in God motivates me, encourages me, empowers empower me to live faithfully. Because if I have faith, then I will act in faith. If I believe God, then I act like I believe God. <laughs> if I believe God, then I respond to what God says. Because I believe. I'll do what He says. Eight Sarah. Then I believe that at 80 years old, she'd have a baby. But she went to heaven, went to that Abraham, just gave God right. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to go do what God said. Just in case God's right. All right. Sometimes you got to live where God says live. Yeah. Just in case God's right. I got to give where God says give. Yeah. I got to serve where God says serve. Yeah. So God may be right. Yeah. I don't know how I can. But my faith says I believe God. That's right. So without faith, you can't believe God. All right, man. Right. And you don't have faith if it's not evidence of the work that you're doing for God. Amen. James said, you may say you have faith, but show me your faith without the works. He said, I'll show you my faith by my works. James says, you say you believe God? James, that's good. But he said, the devils believe also. All right. Say no, that's God. Right. Say that's talked to him. Say that's encountered him. Right. Say that's tempted him. Yeah. Say that was in his choir. Right. Lucifer, the son of the morning, was in God's choir. All right, now. He knows God. Right. He knows how to worship God. Mm -hmm. He knows what God wants. Mm -hmm. Satan, in the days of Job, came into the presence of God. When the sons of men came to God, Satan showed up. 
come to church, by the way? Say that come to church more than you do. So, say don't take no vacation. Now I'm going to church. I'm going to see what they're doing. I'm going to cue somebody. I'm going to flatter somebody. I'm going to lock the same little flat in the box there. Right. Same little right. accuser. Right. Same right. for this cause of my brother. Right. So when that satanic spirit gets in you, that's Satan. When you, when you, when you call them problem tree folk, and you're right. no stop folk, that's right. disturbing folk, that's Satan. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Satan <laughs> loved to come to church. Yes. When Joshua was praying, Satan was there. Trying to resist Joshua. Yeah, right. Trying to get his mind off prayer. Satan will try to keep Joshua out of prayer, y'all. Yeah. I'm just saying. That's how he acts. Satan knows God. Right. James said, Thou believest in one God, the God does well. For the Eastwood says, The devil believes it. James 2 19. Thou believest there is one God, thou does well. The devils also believe and tremble. The devil knows there's a God. The devil believes there's a God. The devil's having an encounter with God. When, when Jesus told the devil to come out of that man at the graveyard, the devil ran to the homes. In fact, they said, Jesus, what, what are we going to do with you? Why are you bothering us? Get any time? He said, Jesus said, you have a conversation with him. Y'all stop talking to the devil. Y'all get Facebook with the devil. Y'all get Twitter with the devil. All right. One reason I'm not on Facebook because the devil might be on Facebook. All right, there you go. And I don't feel like they bothered with it. The reason I'm on Twitter is the devil might be on Twitter. I don't feel like they bothered with it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he on Twitter. Yeah. Because I'm a folk up. And the devil, unlike you, loves me around folk. That's right. So he greets the devil's bit. That's right. So James said the devil believed that there's one God. And tremble. But James said, the devil don't work for God. The devil don't worship God. The devil don't give their time and offering to God. The devil don't serve God. The devil don't sing for God. The devil don't do the things for God. So James said, without no faith, man, that faith without works. And without faith, and without being faithful, it's impossible to please God. And for we've got to stop trying to please God and not right. being faithful to God. James is just that word. Just the word. You cannot please God. Listen, listen. I'll be you for example. I get in trouble. You can't please the least. You're not faithful to a God. All right, yeah. I don't care how good he looked. I don't care how long she had him. I don't care what he bought. She'll take that electric and that new car. <laughs>
given up anything when you make a decision to come to God. You're not giving up anything when you, say, when you give God priority. You're not give up anything when you give God service. You're not giving up when you give God worship. You put yourself in a position for a, a reward. Not, not a gift, a reward. A gift is not a gift for you. Just go. That's salvation. A reward is not a gift for you because you earn the reward. And many of us will go to the reward, but we don't want to work for A reward comes from service. I have a bunch of awards that I got from my government service. Maybe a dozen, two dozen plaques and awards. Then the government, not the government. They did rot. <laughs> they did rot. Meritorious service. Meritorious civilian service. Two or three of them. Exceptional civilian service. Civilian service, no war. All I want was a check. In fact, when I got the war, no check. What a check. <laughs> Because she has faith. And she will faithful. 
You've got to make a decision to come in faith. And you've got to make a decision to grow in faith. And you've got to make a decision to live faithfully, to serve faithfully, to give faith. Because without faith, you can't please God. And I wouldn't want to face God when he's angry with me. I wouldn't want to face God when he's displeased with me. Paul said in Hebrew, 2 Corinthians 5, knowing the terror of God, what a persuaded man to come faithfully, live faithfully, serve faithfully. James says it's a terrible thing to fall to the hand of a living God. Paul says he's coming back in the flame and fire, taking vengeance on them. They said, no, not they did not obey the God. They were not faithful. All he did is sorry. God has you perfectly. Just have faith. Faith that you come. Just have faith to believe. Faith is serve. I'm going to for your faith. That's a beautiful thing. God not has to give up anything. You have to put us in a position to get something. He said, I will reward you for your faithfulness. He said, in that you've been faithful over three days. I'll make you rule over me. Well done, that good and faithful. In a doubt, and to the joy of your Lord. Would you come today? Christ came and died on Calvary's cross. He was faithful and served to God. When he was opposed by Satan in the wilderness, he was faithful. When Satan tried to distract him with physical things, he was faithful. When Satan tried to attract him with glory and self work and self image and lift him up, he was faithful. Christ did a lot of things, but the most important thing he did was be faithful unto death. When he was brought into the courthouse, he had the power to release from the court. He had an army of 20,000 angels that would come down and release him from power. He had the power. You have no power over me. I have a legion of angels. But he thought, even for this cause, came out into the world. You don't take my life. I lay it down. I have power to lay it down. I have power to raise it up. It was his faith that caused him to go to camp. It was his faith that caused him to hang from Calvary's cross. It was his faith that allowed him to bury him in the barbed tomb. Faith in God called stone to roll away. I know he had faith because when he got out of the tomb, after they beat him, after they crucified him, they run high. He got up. He dusted himself off so he could walk back to town. The same place they run him out. He had faith to get up and go back. Told his disciples, just have faith. Would you stand with me? If you're here today and you want to please God, 